everyone. We have ourselves a little bit of a situation here. This is a division that I'm trying to propagate from my Catliantha white bridal, and I thought it might be interesting to take you along what to do when it comes to this. We have a beautiful new growth coming. I would like to make sure that that stays healthy, but I cannot guarantee that it does. But if I don't deal with this mold straight away, it won't be healthy. Now I have a root nub in here as well, so we're gonna have to be extra careful. Normally what I would do in the case like this, I would just blast the whole base with hydrogen peroxide. But when it comes to root nubbins, we have ourselves a different situation. We don't want that to burn. And even a 3% hydrogen peroxide on something as delicado as this, could cause problems. So what I'm going to do is just expose the base. My paintbrush has alcohol on it. So I'm just not going to touch that area because I want to see if I stand a chance. See what's going on. So just with some alcohol moving around the base to assess the situation with a little bit more detail. That's not gonna take care of it permanently. Maybe what I'm doing now won't take care of it permanently either, but not doing anything again will definitely cause the demise of this division. So going against the grain from top to bottom, I am going to try and do my best to guide the hydrogen peroxide around the rhizome. No more no less. And then I will use my paintbrush for the finer detail. And I hope I can keep this in focus while I don't look at the viewfinder and do what I need to do. I also don't want to go in this direction here because I don't want to affect anything in the crevices of the new growth. So we'll use our paintbrush once again, just to take that away. There we go. And now, once again, with hydrogen peroxide this time, we're gonna paint the base of this little baby growth. Trying to avoid that root nubbin. Now, if things go well, this should be enough. But based on the time of year, there's no guarantee that this is enough. It'll need some serious monitoring for the coming days. Just to make sure, sorry if this is out of focus, I'm really trying to pay attention to what I'm doing away from the viewfinder. There we go. Using my finger to protect the new growth that is underneath, I'm going to spray a little bit more in that area and you can see the fizzing. That means it's doing something, it's working on something that is in there and that shouldn't be in there. And the next thing is to let it dry out. And as you can see, I put my little division upside down so that anything that drains away from it does not get into the nooks and crevices over here in a very airy area. Now, because it is winter and it is cooler, things may not dry out quickly enough. So all of this is a bit of a risk. And the next thing I'm going to do is clean out its little container. I'm gonna wash it out with disinfectant and I'm gonna change the hob material and I won't have any water at the base. The hob material will still be damp, but there will be no water residue at the base. Let's just say I don't have any hob material that I've got new. This is a new piece, but let's just say I don't have any more left. The old hob material can always be sprayed with hydrogen peroxide abundantly to make sure that any spores that are in there are also dealt with. The same can be done with alcohol. I prefer to use hydrogen peroxide because inevitably it will just turn into water. It'll do the job as well. And if we're talking about wanting humidity at the base of our container, 
then, you know, we've already got a piece that has been cleaned up and there is no more spores in there. And the rest is just water maintaining it damp, but there's no residue water in the base. Same can be done with sphagnum moss, but if you have this situation with sphagnum moss, you cannot reuse your old sphagnum moss, obviously, because the spores are in there. You have to change out and use fresh sphagnum moss because you don't want to have any kind of transferal of what you're trying to get rid of and treat around this area and put that back in with the sphagnum moss that is obviously also full of fungus spores. So again, no guarantees, but it's worth a try. And let's hope that that was good enough and I will definitely update you as and when there is something to see, be it rot, decline or growth. I will let you know. Thank you so, so very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that when you see a case like this in your collection that you know exactly what you can try and do. And not every case is going to be successful because of so many, many variables. The energy in a division, is it enough? The time of year, is there enough going on? Warmth, etc. In my climate, I do not supplement with heat mats and very, very rarely do I use supplemental lighting. And these factors are super important for an orchid to be able to perform, especially during the winter months. So we shall see what this little one does with the circumstances and conditions that I have available for it. In my opinion, my little division is gonna need it much, much warmer and a lot more light for this to be successful. Anyway, it's worth a try. Let me know if you have any questions at all and we can go into more details in the comments below. Have yourselves a fabulous day. Please, as always, on one condition, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.